book buzz. Harper Collins book buzz. Check it out. Doo doo doo. Book Buzz, Harper Collins Book Buzz. Brought to you by Library Love Fest. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome to Galley Club. I'm Lainey Mays, a Library Marketing Associate at Harper Collins, and I'm joined by my colleague. I'm Grace, Library Marketing Assistant at HarperCollins. We're very excited. Um, Virginia is now in the Library Reads webinar book list. So if you're there, don't worry. We have this as a recording and vice <laughs> versa if you're here. So no worries. We're very sad not to have Virginia with us, but we're all book buzzing our little hearts out today. Let me tell you, <laughs> on different platforms. So thank you for joining us. Um, we thought Grace and I were talking before we got on. We're like, we should have a, a like question or like an icebreaker. So we were talking about spooky movies or like Halloween fall. It can be very generic. So in the chat, tell us what your favorite like go to fall or Halloween or spooky or October movie is. And we'll also accept like shows. We'll accept both. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think mine is probably oh i'm watching the corpse ride this weekend but i don't think it's my favorite i can't oh. lie i think mine is probably hocus pocus oh have you seen sure. the second one no i haven't but i did go to salem this last year and it was like a fangirl's dream it was very fun for me yeah salem's fun at this time it's very crowded but it's fun oh yeah for sure yeah yeah i'm kind of scared to watch the second one just I don't know. I hope it's good. Yeah. Love Sometimes you, bet. Sequels really disappoint you, so I'm also a little nervous, but yeah. we'll see. <laughs> okay, we have some people. So we have a original Halloween from 1978. Good one. Nightmare Before Christmas. I loved that book. My childhood dog was named Jack after Jack Skellington, oh. so. I do have a question. Day. There's that that debate on if it's a Christmas or a Halloween movie. Do we just watch it yes. both times? <laughs> Yeah, the answer is yes. Um, I think you're allowed to watch it even throughout November. Like that's acceptable okay. to me. Because okay. like there's no year round. Into, yeah, there's no Thanksgiving movies, right? Possibly. <laughs> I don't know. Charlie Brown has a has a Thanksgiving oh, true. special. Very we'll true. <laughs> um yeah, oh hi Jennifer Winberry. So she said she's going back and forth between the library <laughs> presentation so I know they're both recorded so don't worry we didn't want to leave you hanging though because we have a really great buzz today we're going to go over some books um and we also have an Edelweiss catalog so Grace if you can put that in the zoom in the Facebook chat that'd be great yeah, hi Casey Davis hey. hey there gals uh Casey I found your um recipe that you gave me for granola the other day and I really want to make it so I was thinking about you um Sylvia it's a two-month treat yes so thank you for getting me back on topic so today's a book buzz and then we have a really fabulous uh author appearance on the 25th with uh Laura Zygman which we're going to talk about her book uh, in a little bit but small world we're very excited we love Laura she's amazing and this book um she's done it again she just has such great um great fiction that you can just really connect with and the characters will stay with you for a long time so we'll talk more about it in a little bit but I do want to remind you to go ahead and sign up it's on our Facebook page under events it's also um the zoom link is also there so if you have colleagues who don't use Facebook they can use the zoom link I know hi to my zoomers they're on here too and um join us it's gonna be fun we have a little special surprise Grace do you want to tell them about our small world surprise yeah, so we are giving away free e-galleys of um, Small World by Laura Zygman up until the book buzz, or sorry, the interview. And I hope that you guys read it and enjoy it as much as we do, and then come ready with your questions. Yeah, so I'm going to put that link in there too, so you can t sign up and you're going to get the, the e-galley, because we really want you to read and come prepared with some questions if you have them. The author is just so lovely, but I think 
it's always fun to dive in before you get there so you can kind of go a little deeper you know we always say there's no you know spoilers are kind of fair game a little bit you mm -hmm. know so if you read the book you maybe won't have any <laughs> any spoilers here's the egalite for the zoom ones. um all right um here we go and everyone here's the um catalog let me try this one more time so everybody has access so you can follow along with this okay so let's get started shall we do we yeah. want to start talking about some books keep the conversation going in the chat if you have any like october spooky watches we'll keep calling them out or if you're reading something really fun that you want to talk about that's cool too um do we want to start with farewell tour yeah, all righty good to me cool this one i'm super excited about not just because that jacket is amazing and i think it gives you a perfect glimpse into what exactly you're reading you know sometimes you see a cover and you're like yep that's what i want to read right now and i think that that one's perfect but um it's a really unique story i think fans of you know i loved valentine by elizabeth wetmore and i i kind of think the same fans would would be pulled to this just because of the southern um draw but also kind of this woman's story and um kind of reconnecting with things in her past and her new future so Stephanie Clifford is the New York Times bestselling author of Everybody Rise this novel has you know rich historical detail it's got really great settings um if you think like the cold millions and great circle and this woman's rise to fame especially in country and western music um it's 1980 in the book and Lillian Waters, the protagonist, is hitting the road for the last time. She's pretty jaded from her years of being in the music business, She's kind of always hung over. She's diagnosed with career ending vocal problems, but she puts together this nationwide farewell tour and she's going to call on some old friends, old hands um, from her early days playing in honky tonk bars. Um, in Washington State, and then in Nashville, and a few other ones, and she really wants this rush of making live music one more time, and Bass and Globe, a packed house, before she um, makes her last, and arguably most important, stop on the tour, the farm she left behind at age 10. Also there is a sister who, she's, she's finally ready to maybe confront uh, a betrayal from their childhood, and it goes between, so you're hearing this story in her last farewell tour, but it kind of crisscrosses the eras um, between her youth, which has got like the depression, the second world war and the rise of Nashville, and then her middle age life in 1980. So you see her, her start of her career and then like the end um, and kind of striving to make this career in a male dominated world of country music and all of the hard choices that she has to make, you know, like music, uh, redefining music, but in also loving and aging and being a woman, um, making things on her own terms. And uh, she kind of has to confront some of those choices as she gets to that last final stop. Um, it's about exploring creativity and ambition and sacrifice, but also this making this art form and especially as a, as a woman moving through that world. Um, very joy voice driven page turning and like i said if you like valentine you kind of like the the grittier telling of a of a woman going through honestly just life um this it's going to be perfect for you and it's got this great woman at the center um i really i think you'll enjoy it so that's the farewell tour by stephanie clifford and i believe it's on sale march 7th yeah, I also, someone, Kimberly said they love the cover. I also love this cover. I wish I owned that jacket. Um, and I'm also going to Nashville this weekend, so maybe I'll search for, like, the perfect jacket and match the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> please do. Please bring it back. <laughs> yeah, you're right. March 7th. Okay. Our next book is Vintage Contemporaries. I also love this cover. It is so beautiful. Um and Vintage Contemporaries by Dan Coyce, uh, who is the editor and writer at Slate. This is his uh, fiction debut, and it's a coming-of-age novel set in New York City. 
um, which I think is very popular and I've been seeing a lot of coming of age novels in New York City and I think it's just, you know, a beautiful city, a place um, that sort of story in. And this follows our main character, M, and it take, takes place in 1991 when uh, she first moves to New York City and she's pretty, she's pretty broke and worn down. And I think that she's kind of realizing it is not what she thought it was going to be. Um, and I think a lot of people can, you know, relate to that like youthful um, and hopeful like ambition of, you know, moving when you're that young. Um, so she moves to New York City and she's working as a literary agent's assistant and she makes um, friends with these two women that are very, very different. Um, so her friend Emily works in a theater and her friend Lucy is a middle-aged novelist and a single mom. Um, you know, and through these friendships, they, she has a lot of surprises in these friendships and they are wildly different um, and they have really contrasting views of art and life. But um, throughout this, you know, I'm just deciding like who she is and what she's gonna do and who she's gonna be. So that's the 1991 part of the book. And then it jumps forward to 2004. So you have like both sides of this millennium. And now I'm in like a vastly different place than she was in 1991. She's married, she's a successful book editor. She has a new baby. And, you know, her past keeps kind of coming back even though she's, you know, trying not to really think about it anymore. Um, so Emily comes back into her life and, um, as well as like Lucy's book um, needs to be published after she passed away. So she's kind of dealing with these, you know, recurrences of the past and it's just a really beautifully written novel. The prose is delicious. I loved it. Um, and I'm gonna read you a quote from Ruman Alam, New York Times bestselling author, author of Leave the World Behind. Vintage Contemporaries is about being young and becoming less young, exploring friendship, sometimes magical, sometimes mesh messy, parenthood, ditto, and how to reconcile youthful ambition and ideals with real life. It's warm and big hearted coming of age story that made me wistful for my own 20s set in a vividly rendered and long vanished New York City. I think this book is really going to bring that nostalgia factor for a lot of people, especially if you were in New York during that time and just anyone reminiscing on what it was like to be 20 and not know a lot of things and to fail and to make mistakes and yeah, I'm really excited for this one. I'm really excited for you to read it. And if you do read it, let me know what you think. And that one comes out, I want to say January 17th, 2023. Okay. Awesome. We love Ramon Alam. So anything he says, we're pretty much on board here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, we have some Halloween colors in this cover. Pest. How humans create animal villains, which what a great subtitle, I have to say. So I think if you're like me, some pets, well, some animals are pets, some are pests, <laughs> and some, you know, fall weirdly in neither category, but like, I don't want anything to do with them. Um, and I think it's hard to draw that line for some animals, but this book is a really fascinating study on how we deem certain animals one or the other or neither and how that line is kind of arbitrary but like who comes up with that and like some you're like oh a dog I want to pet them and some you're like oh there's there's bugs in my house you know like you get angry when they're just living their bug life no pun intended. <laughs> um but this goes from cats to rats elephants to pigeons and it talks about all of them and how we draw that hard line between human spaces and wild places and animals like popping up unexpectedly and us being mad for, you know, they're just doing their thing. But um, this is an intersection between science history and um, narrative journalism. The author is an award-winning science writer who was the 2019-20 fellow at the MIT Night Science Journalism Fellowship. Um, a contributor to Science News Magazine and a host of the podcast Science for the People. Um, she's a staff reporter uh, at the Society for Science and the Public and publishes Science News and Science News for Students. I don't I don't know if this is the same thing, but when I was younger, we had those papers that we would get in science class. They kind of look like newspapers. And I just remember how fascinating that was. And I think that's kind of the same readership, the like making making animals and science kind of pop pop science interest you know like those two things at the intersection of those two things and so 
this book though it is called pests but it's about us at the the root of it because what um calling an animal pest says more about people and how we live and what we want than it really does about the animals itself it's about human nature and how we categorize them and um this perspective so i think that you know it's a great gift for any nature lover but it's also just really interesting as kind of like from a scientific approach and so it's going to be a good reference as well um and it's lively and accessible very conversational and um i mean who doesn't love talking about furry creatures uh, maybe some more than others but hey what does that say about us the book is going to tell <laughs> you um and that comes out in in december i will i it got two starred reviews it got one from kirkus and one from publishers weekly um the there's a great quote from john shivik um as human populations expand and the climate changes these animals are not going away Brookshire has a magnificent ability to bring the ecological context of our epic conflicts with everything from snakes to elephants down to the entertaining and personal. So like the reviews are crazy great for these and Mary Roach gave it a thumbs up. So I I really, I think this is going to be kind of a, a quiet, fun hit. We're, we're really excited about this one. Um, so Bethany Brookshire, Pests, and I say December 6th. Okay, our next book is Finale, Late Conversations with Stephen Sondheim by D.T. Max, who is a New Yorker staff writer. Um, and I think this is such a brilliant book. It's an intimate look at the creative process, life, aging, the family of um, musical genius Sondheim. And he passed away just about a year ago, and I think this is publishing late November yeah November 22nd so it's around the time of his um like the one year anniversary of his passing um and in 2017 Max was going to be writing a profile on Sondheim so he was having lots of conversations with him um and this kind of got derailed by a couple things Sondheim had like reservations about you know going forward with this as well as you know COVID and then his eventual passing um and I'm I'm really hesitant to even call these interviews because they flow so well and they're really fluid they're truly conversations um with him and you know it's all blended very beautifully and these conversations are weaved into a very like unique portrait of this man and you know Sondheim is a very private person I think this is kind of like seeing Sondheim as he's never been seen before um and again I think this is going to be great for musical theater fans especially fans of West Side Story, Sunday in the Park with George into the Woods, which is my favorite musical. Um, if you, is it still on Broadway? It might be off now, but yeah, it was such a such a great show. Um, but um, I think this is going to be a really, really great look at Sondheim and kind of like a nice memorial for him as well. And, and yeah, the cover is coming. great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. That one again is coming um, November 22nd. Perfect. Yeah, I think that would be fun for like displays if you had, mm -hmm. you know, people and like if there was a Broadway display or even just like playwrights. Um, that's kind of cool. Love that's it. Amazing. All righty. So, yeah, and I saw Kimberly McGee said, uh, sounds like a Mary Roach book right after, before I said <laughs> she gave a thumbs up. So, yes, you're right on track. <laughs> um, okay. Let's look at financial feminists. This one, super excited about. And I have to say, I did not know about Tori until this book was launched to us a while back. And when it was launched, I immediately found it so intriguing that I had gone to, you know, she's really big on social and I had followed her. And I have to say that she's given me things that are really fascinating and things I've put into my daily practice. I think she gives great advice, but um, so just let you know, I, I really am a big fan of Tori's before I even talk about the book itself. And I think she's very personable. And if you follow her, maybe you've seen her on social or other events, but I'm, I'm personally really excited about this one. So um, Tori is a globally recognized money and career expert whose work has been featured on Good Morning America, The Today Show, The New York Times and more. She runs her first 100K, um, a business that changes women's lives, helping them gain control over their career and finances. 
she started it while working her nine to five and now it's a multi seven figure business. So, you know, she knows a little bit of what she's talking about. Uh, <laughs> It's a joke. She knows a lot. Um, this book is going to explore the same principles that she's famous for. She's kind of shame and judgment free in her approaches, especially when it comes to paying off debt, um, figuring out your value categories to spend mindfully, saving money without deprivation and investing for retirement. She looks at financial literacy, the wealth gap how women were taught to invest. Um, they're all explored in this book. And she's really here to teach women to overcome the unique obstacles standing in their way of financial freedom. Um, I personally, I think she's so fascinating because she has like her big narrative is don't let people say that like, oh, I don't know how to do that or it's too hard or there's a barrier to entry or, you know, my, my um, like a male, whatever, father, somebody will help me with it. They'll do it. And like, don't rely on that. Like, it's up to you. You can do it, put it in, put the work in. And I think that is um, really inspiring to hear for people who feel a little bit dejected or a little scared to get into that. I think she has such an approachable way about her. And this book will have journal prompts as well as interviews with experts applicable steps, as well as an analyzation of bigger systemic issues with wealth privilege. So yes, it, it's prescriptive in a way, like you can use it and you can fill out these journal prompts for your personal growth. But I think even as a, as a grander conversation about wealth management and um, wealth privilege, I think that that also is going to stand on its own in that way. Um, but I just love her attitude on money and there's nothing to fear. You can, you can figure it out and it's super approachable. And like I said, great resource. So that comes out in December. Look, you can get it for your friends and family or a gift for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a great time for like new year's resolutions too. If you're like trying to save money in the new year, right before new year's. Yeah. I think good timing. Would, yeah. Good point. I think it would be good for um, like weirdly enough book clubs, you know, I think to have a conversation about these, like to, to de-stigmify, de-stigmify it, like demystify it, talk about it, see what other people are having issues with. I think it'd be a great one to discuss and check out Absolutely. her TikTok and her Instagram. They're really fun. Mm -hmm. I recognized her from TikTok. Like the second I saw the book, I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, and then we have Womb by Leah Hazard. And Leah Hazard is a Harvard grad, used to be a journalist, and is now a midwife. So very qualified to talk about Womb. <laughs> um, and this is an exploration of the uterus at the time a person is born until their death. Um, I wanted to avoid like sounding like a marriage foul, but truly and in sickness and in health, she goes through that. And also the history of um, you know what we know today about the womb. This book was fascinating and enlightening. I cannot tell you how many times I said I didn't know that out loud to myself or how did I not know that <laughs> throughout this entire read. Um, and I loved this book for a lot of reasons. What I loved, what I loved most about this book is um, Hazard approaches this like scientific topic with a lot of humor and warmth. And she does so in a way that does not undermine her expertise at all. And I think this book is not cold or clinical despite being a sciencey book. Um, and I think her um, personal anecdotes that are kind of woven throughout this book very seamlessly are like why the book comes across the way it does. Um, so I also deeply appreciated like the effort she made um, to make this book inclusive and she approaches people with uteruses with a lot of like nuance and compassion. And it's pretty progressive for that. A lot of um, texts about things like this are really dated. Um, she also discusses like a lot of overlooked topics, um, like, you know, how misogynistic the early researchers were when they were exploring the womb and how they kind of like used very like awful language to describe um, this part of the body. And yeah, I think she does a really great job at, you know, shedding light on that and also talking about medical racism involved because there was a huge history of that. And she does a really, really good job at tackling that. Um, her epilogue actually was really really eye-opening so when you get to the end of it make sure you read that blog do not skip it it was definitely worth it I even suggest maybe reading it first um I did that and I think that that was really great it kind of informed the rest of the read so this is definitely not a book to miss I think it's really accessible so like leisure readers will enjoy it as well as like more you know 
well-versed or academics will enjoy this as well. I think it's a really um, timely book. And I think a lot of people are gonna be looking for books like this, especially considering um, you know, events that we've had in the US in the past couple of months. So definitely not one to miss, really great, um, really eye-opening. Um, yeah, I'm excited about that one. And that one comes out March 7th as well. That's one that's unfortunately really topical and something that everyone's kind of thinking about, but also it mm -hmm. seems like it's pretty lasting in a way. So Absolutely, it's been, yeah. A, yeah. There's been a lot of books about, um, you know, uteruses and things like that coming out this whole year. I think it's very on trend as well. Yeah. Well, we're almost halfway through. Should we take a little break, and like a TikTok break? What do you think? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Let's okay. Do it. So if you don't know everybody, we have a TikTok and we also post to Instagram. So we see both mm -hmm. videos uh, either way, but we have been making videos because you know, we like to have a wacky good time, but <laughs> um, we've been doing this thing where we open new like galleys we get in. We just like to see, you know, we're not ordering as many, I have to say, but you know, it's kind of nice to see them in person sometimes, um, including unboxing Wolf. moments. <laughs> a little unboxing moment love to get a couple so you can see them in the flesh um but we have just been opening them for you and so we have a fun video so I want I don't know if we'll play all of it but we'll have some fun so we pull it up okay Virginia yeah, I'm really busy. New galleys are in. Let's open them. <gasps> Carmen and Grace. Oh my God, I'm so excited to see this one by Melissa Cos Aquino. This is about two uh, cousins, these young girls coming of age in the Bronx and the rough childhood they have. Oh my God, so much buzz about this book. What else? Oh my God, The Lion and the Fox. Oh, oh, Valley Core Jaswell. She's amazing. Now you see us, this is about three women who are working in Singapore's elite homes. And uh, there's a murder and they try and figure out what happened. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful this jacket is. <gasps> uh, marvelous, Molly, really, it's marvelous. And yeah, so I mean, you can go watch the rest of it on our page, it'll be on Instagram shortly you can peep our really funny note that virginia left us at the beginning on our computer um i don't know we just like to have fun and i think if you're looking for more quick like quick little buzzes of other things you're going to get so many books in two minutes so be sure to follow us and uh if you want to hear more about any of them write us a comment we're happy to answer that too um yes can we have way too much fun at our job <laughs> that was your your dose of virginia while she's at um the library reads that one actually <laughs> yes yes and uh Bali Kaur Jaswal the mystery I have to say I'm doing a mystery book list webinar on the 18th so you can sign up for that on their site and I'll put it in in the chat in a minute too so we have lots of fun also Grace you're doing a webinar soon too I am my first one so that's November 1st for uh ALA and I'm really excited about it it's all about debuts so if you're interested in hearing some debuts you should come <laughs> yeah <laughs> great so you have lots of webinars lots of books we really just wanted to pack them in this month so and next so that you have um all the information i know we're di diving deep on the 25th with small world but um hopefully this buzz will will give you everything you need to know until then and a reminder sign, get the e-galley hopefully you can join us to talk um with laura zigman Maybe I'll go to that one next, Grace. Can we show um, yeah. Small World since yeah, I'm definitely. on that? So we'll um, ignore Small Mercies and jump to Small World. <laughs> <laughs> small titles, but not small books. Maybe Very that true. should be a, a, an yeah. ad somewhere. Um, so we also had Small Game this year. Lots of things. That was fantastic. If you haven't read <laughs> Small Game, by Blair um, Braverman that was amazing, but I digress. Um, <laughs> so Small World by Laura Zygman. We love Laura Zygman. She has written Separation Anxiety, which you haven't read that. 
cats, about a dog. She carries around in a sling because she has separation anxiety. It's amazing. Um, animal husbandry, dating big bird and piece of work in her. She, we, we love Laura and she, uh, we're just so excited to have another book from her and to have her on the 25th. Um, so this new book is, is classic Laura. It's, um, got really important relationships, uh, in this, especially familial relationships and dives deep into that. After a year of divorce, Joyce in this book is setting, settling into becoming single again. She has a job archiving family photos and videos. She's developed a secret uh, comforting hobby, which is trolling the social networking site in her neighborhood. Who wouldn't like doing that? Um, and so, you know, when her older sister, Lydia, is also is divorced and is moving back to the east from Los Angeles, after 30 years away almost, Joyce invites Lydia to move into her Cambridge apartment. So now it's an unlikely roommate. Um, instead of her like navigating this single life and maybe another relationship, this is not the relationship she thought she'd be navigating. Um, and she has annoying neighbors upstairs. You know, she's still on her social media network. So she's got all these interesting neighbors. She also has this sister that she hasn't been around really or you know, who's moving back to the East Coast for all those years. So she's kind of understanding where their relationship lies. And instead of forging the bond she really dreamed of having with her sister Lydia, it it kind of just frays instead. And they they have this kind of big thing in the room that they're not discussing. They're not discussing the loss of their sister Eleanor, who was significantly disabled and died when she was only 10 years old. So you know, in their past, they have this loss and they're, they're not really willing to go and discuss it. And, um, this, and so also they have new revelations of their family's history coming to light. And so they just kind of have to, to figure out what their connection is. And is this going to course correct their, their connection in the future? Um, it's really beautiful. Only as Laura Zygmunt could do, there's a lot of exploration of sisterhood and hope and you know the past coming back up and you know separation anxiety got so many rave reviews this one you should see all the quotes crystal jalian said um few novelists write as beautifully about the damaged heart and the wounded soul as laura or understand the emotional bonds of siblings and sisters um shelby van pelt who wrote remarkably bright creatures we loved that book it was a galley club selection as well um she's gave a great she's given a great quote tom parada i mean the the love is so fantastic um joanna roykoff the a profound exploration of the depths and limits of unconditional love that examines what it means to be a mother a daughter a sister a person in this world by turns hilarious and haunting it's a novel for the ages that's a crazy great quote and you know it it is fiction but it is inspired a little bit by Laura's own family history she had, she lost a sister when she was a child and so you know I will say it is fiction but that that also adds another element to it and I think Laura is so wonderful about writing characters who are you know like they're just sometimes in a little bit of the the valley you know that life has peaks and valleys and sometimes they're in those valleys and you know they're ex exploring just their own self self-worth their own family like what their lives look like now that something has changed in their life and I think she does a great job of connecting you to them in a way that um you know it's just like funny she's very wry she's very funny on the page but also like really heartfelt and I think you know like I said only Laura Zygmunt can do we're very excited to have this new book and I really encourage you to come here from Laura herself um she's fantastic and that book comes out in January so you have plenty of time to read this month and then join us on the 25th the book comes out in January so yeah yeah she really nails sisterhood like right on the head I mean it's so on point okay do we want to jump back to small mercy or do you want me to do American food writing. Just, yeah, go for it. Do food okay, writing. Cool. So, Best American Food Writing of 2022. 
Um, we have our series editor for this one, um, Sylvia, Sylvia Kings Killingsworth. Sorry about that. Um, and the guest editor is Sola L. Whaley, who you might recognize from YouTube. She stars on the New York Times Cooking Channel and Binging with Babish. Um, I just watched a video of her trying to create like a three course meal with Hot Pockets. Um, great entertainment. So I think you should definitely check out her videos um, before you read the book as well. Um, so this is a beautiful collection. Um, and it's pretty celebratory too of the culinary landscape in the US. And as someone who's inept in the kitchen, I love reading about food and was so excited to devour this book. Um, it has a lot of really diverse stories um, about food relating to a lot of different things. I would say she did a really good job balancing the types of stories. We have stories about like, um, one man's relationship with food and his queerness um, to the play of like delivery workers. Um, and I think they did a really good job um, pulling in different types of writings. Um, this book is mouthwatering and truly a feast to savor. And I will um, end the food puns now. <laughs> and this book comes out in uh, November 1st. So yeah, coming up soon. Nice. Okay, I'm putting in the chat. I know I you're gonna make me hungry, but um, <laughs> um putting in the chat the Laura Zygman event for supposedly it uh oh Sylvia really like devour this book. That was nice. Thank you. I like um, I, I wrote a note about it too, so I, I appreciate the love for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's not letting me put the Laura Zygman event. Um Grace, do you mind putting that in the Facebook one? I put it in the Zoom, yeah, but yeah. That has, um, you can RSVP for Laura's event. And then also at the bottom, it's got the Zoom link. So if you, you know, pick your poison. Mm -hmm. But um, also I am so happy to see all of the love for Small World. Janet Lockhart, yes, uh, captures Cambridge. Um, that's fabulous. And Kim, Mickey said she's already halfway through Small World and sisters. So um, very excited. All right. Oh, uh, anybody have any questions? like feel free to stick them in the chat I don't want to move too fast um but while we're if anyone has oh Janet's already said about small mercies no one writes better characters than Dennis Lehane I couldn't have said it better mm. myself thank you Janet so um small mercies Virginia is a very big fan of this she even said like please tell them well, I'm not there I love this book so much um Dennis Lehane if you you know you know him from Mystic River or Gone Baby Gone. This is kind of a return back to those kinds of books. You know, he's done different books since that, like a kind of departures from that way, that that area. Um, and this novel returns back to the Boston Irish world that was um, in those classics like Gone Baby Gone and Mystic River. It's classic Lahane, um, and it has a missing child at the center and a really fierce female protagonist. So um and this this one starts in the summer of 1974. A heat wave. Oh, let me try that again. A heat wave blankets Boston, and Mary Pat Finnessy is trying to stay one step ahead of bill collector. She's lived her entire life in these housing projects. She's you know a Southie, um, the Irish American enclave that adheres to really old traditions, and you know very proudly, but they do adhere to older traditions for better or for worse. Um, and one night, Mary Pat, um, her teenage daughter, Julie, Jules, sorry, stays out late and doesn't come home. The same evening, a young Black man is found dead. They don't really seem connected at all, um, but Mary Pat is really propelled by a desperate search for her missing daughter that she starts turning some things over that maybe she shouldn't be turning over and asking questions about... Um, uh, this chieftain of the Irish mob, uh, Marty Butler, she's asking questions and the men who work for them and, you know, they don't take too, too kindly to like someone poking around in their business. So that may not be great, but this one is just a really superb thriller. It's got this intersection of these two things. It kind of looks at this really dark heart of American racism, along with just this like really fierce woman trying to find justice um there's a lot to unpack in this book and I just can't even like I have to read you this one quote that 
I had not even seen until today by Juno Diaz. And uh, it made my jaw drop. It's such a good quote. So Dennis Lehane is a supernova. And this is a novel that will throw your entire goddamn solar system out of alignment. I've never read a quote like that. But I think that should be on a t-shirt somewhere. Um, so Lehane has gone from strength to strength, but is never, but he's never been more truthful, more heartbreaking, more essential. And in the midst of our racial nightmare, small mercies ask some of the only questions that matter. What's gonna change? When's it gonna change? Where's it gonna change? How's it gonna change? And this book is impossible to put down, and its dark radiances will stay with you a long, long time. I've read a lot of quotes today, but that one is like crazy good. I can't like probably goes down as one of my favorite quotes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not, I think I don't think there's any more left to say after that. You believe <laughs> Juno Diaz because that's amazing. And I have to say, actually, Juno Diaz, but also believe Virginia because she really loves this book and believes mm -hmm. in it. Um, and we will talk a little bit later, but uh Dennis is going to be at Dave Dialogue, so you can hear from Dennis. Oops. Yeah, Janet said that Small Mercies packs so much into that, not many pages, a master class of writing. That's great. Yeah. Okay. And believe Janet Lockhart. We have so many people to believe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that book comes out April 25th. Yeah. Okay. Painted Small Worlds. Chlorine. I am in love with this cover it is stunning I think it is just like perfectly wrapped up the book um and the the red in the background is very topical for the book if you read it you know what I mean um so chlorine by Jade Song this is their debut novel um and this is for fans of the Pisces and the vegetarian it's a literary coming of age novel and I think it dips into a lot of different genres like horror magical realism fantasy and it has that like super wide appeal and there's a lot of crossover and there's a lot of like really in, important topics packed into this book. And I think that makes it like really great potential for like book clubs. And I don't wanna give too much away because this book really does speak for itself. Um, and it's like, it's one of those books where like page one, chapter one, just like pulls you right in. I was obsessed from the get go. Um, but Chlorine follows Ren Yu, who's a competitive swimmer obsessed with being in the water and mermaids. And um, despite the entire book's theme, like surrounding water and being about water, she's a very fiery and powerful narrator. Um, and I think that the description of the book that they provided, like really, um, you know, draws that home. And it says, Ren aches to be in the water. She dreams of the scent of chlorine, the feel of it on her skin, and she will do anything she can to make a life for herself where she can be free, no matter the pain, no matter what anyone else thinks, no matter how much blood she has to spill. That one little description pretty much sums up the whole book. Um, there's a lot to this book. It explores um, you know, her struggles of growing up in a society that puts a lot of pressure on women and their bodies, especially in sports, especially in sports like swimming um so I think athletes will really connect to that and it also ex like examines her experience with racism as a Chinese American um with immigrant parents um I think a lot of people will connect to that and there's also a lot of like queer sapphic yearning in this book again another way for people to connect even though it is like a fantastical and supernatural book there's a lot of you know really humanistic qualities about it um, this book is super intense and disturbing at times and really, really hard to put down. I had a lot of reading to do this weekend and kept getting sucked into this book. And I think you should run to NetGalley, run to Edelweiss. This is not to be missed. And this is a powerful debut. And I'm excited to see what else Jade Song puts out in the future, just based on this. I have to reiterate that, like, you were just saying how crazy great this was before we got on here. And I think what mm -hmm. appealed to me, what you were saying, Grace, is like, I just don't even know how to begin to sit. Like, I just, yeah. and I think when you love something so much, we've talked about this in the past, it's just so hard to put into words. Like, I can't even describe like what I want you to know other than just reading the book. <laughs> so. Yeah, absolutely. And like, I think I'm like, not a very, like, I don't read fantasy a lot and it's not really like my thing. And I think that 
this is like a version of fantasy and supernatural stuff that is super digestible because of like how human some of the issues are in it. And I think that a lot of people are really going to enjoy this. And I think book clubs are really going to like this. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's it's just so good so far. And I'm, I'm really excited to see what people think. So if you like it, let me know. Yeah, got that speculative kind of mm-hmm. crossover. That's great. Yeah, and, and the prose is beautiful too. Like very literary, very, very great. Awesome. All right, so we have a few minutes left. Um, one, checking on the chat. How are you guys doing? If you're if you're here, just give me a thumbs up. Um, if there's anything you want to know, again, we're here. Um, or anything else you want us to cover in another buzz, like please tell us that too. Um, so in our last few minutes, I just want to quickly tell you about Day of Dialogue. So um, we're going to share that RSVP link for Day of Dialogue. It's a free event. So please go. You can log on. It's a virtual chat all day long on October 20th, free. So please sign up and you can go booth to booth, virtual booth to booth. And you also hear from authors. And so we have six fantastic authors on panels. We also have some booth chats that I'll tell you about. And that takes place in our virtual booth. So um, Grace, I'm still unable to post in the Facebook page. I don't know. So can you share that? Yeah, RC I'll feeling? Send that. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so we have Hungry Ghost by Kevin Jared Hossein. This one I'm reading right now, and I can I can show you all my little tabs that I have in here because I am enjoying this so much. It's such a great read and such a, a like just the the author's note on Edelweiss. It's also in the front of the galley. Go read that because like it packs a punch, and that's not even the book. That's just the author's note and I was like if this is any indication it's gonna be fantastic it's set in 1940s Trinidad um it's got a mystery at the heart um and it's a little look at class and gentrification in this small town so um definitely want to hear from Kevin he'll be there to talk fiction colonial and post-colonial from 9 30 to 10 10 eastern that morning um and then next we have Charles Frazier the trackers um he's author of Club Mountain and Verena the new novel that, um, you know, Life in the Great Depression. He's going to be talking on the Fiction Journeys panel from 11.15 to 12.10 Eastern. And then next we have um, Etoff Rum, who will speak on the Fiction Finding Oneself panel at 1 p.m. Eastern. This book, I like if you didn't read A Woman Is No Man, stop everything you're doing and go read that. That book was just a powerful debut Utah from Blows It Out the Water. It's a book that I think about regularly, especially a view in a very insular community of which she goes into. It's in, you know, in Brooklyn. Um, this one has some of those ties as well. Um, a little different, someone trying to, but still within that like other structure of family, how do you escape, but without being not in it at all? It, it's interesting. And this one- Beautiful cover too. Yeah. Evil Eye about Utah from. And then we also have Simon Winchester. Um, his book is Knowing What We Know. I love Simon Winchester. He's so nice and he is so smart. I don't understand. He just writes um, with such, you know, I love a good not narrative nonfiction. And this one is um, just all about like, you know, what's the, the first encyclopedia to Wikipedia, ancient museums to modern kindergarten classes, like all of the brilliant and a brilliant look at how humans acquire and pass on information and data um, and technology and how it changes uh, and our minds, how it changes our minds, not just data. And then of course we talked about Small Mercies. So we have Dennis Lehane. He's gonna be on the fiction thrillers panel from 4.30 to 5.30 Eastern on October 20th. And then um, just last, Tracy Rose Payton, Night Wherever We Go. This one is really beautiful. And it is a look at, it's it's a debut. It's a novel about a group of enslaved women who staged a uh, rebellion against their owners. It's, it's not a true, you know, it's based on a true thing that happened. Uh, a group of women who worked um, on this, uh, they, ha- they were slaves and they worked uh, on this plantation and th- they brought in people to, to have children and miraculously not very many children were born in a 
in a long time. And so what did they do to take control of their lives? It's really fascinating, but the characters are, are beautiful and it's beautifully written. Look at that cover. Uh, I'm, I know, I love, I love the book. jacket. Yeah, this one's going to be really fascinating, especially with that historical element in it. Um, and she's going to be on the historical fiction panel at 4.30 as well. Um, we're going to be in the booth live chatting. We're going to have a little buzz at the beginning of the day. So check out for more information on that. It'll be probably um, at that nine-ish nine spot early in the morning. And then we also have booth chats um, that will take place during the break. So far, we have confirmed Brianna Labuskas and we have um, Brad Taylor uh, who wrote The Devil's Ransom. You know, he's he's a big wrestling. We love we love Brad Taylor. So both authors will be in our booth. Um, maybe possibly with some other authors. We're still confirming some stuff, but you get a first look. So uh, Brad will be there during the, let me double check, during the 12, 10 break. And then Brianna will be there at the 255 break. So everything will be available in our booth. So, you know, don't worry, we're going to have it all written out for you. But I think it's going to be just a wonderful showing of lovely, lovely authors. I always personally really love it. I love hearing from all of them. And uh, let me tell you, this list is a, the overall list, Library Journal, Dave Dialogue list is great. And we are very lucky to have our authors on there. So please. Maureen wants to know if the panels will be archived. Yes. So you can access it via that same link, you know, once it's all live. Even our booth chats, we're going to record and put in our booth. So you can see that later too, if you miss it during the break. You can archive, I, I believe, I know for sure, but I believe it's six months after the event. So you'll have time to go view everything. And if there are e-galleys available, that will be in our booth as well. Um, Kim will be there with bells on, so excited. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I, I really hope you join us. You know, we always have some fun in the chat and uh i i think our little buzz that we're gonna do is gonna be super fun too that's i think that's our first one we've done a day of dialogue um yeah we're in for a really fun time and not to sound like a broken record but another quick reminder is that you can grab your free e-galley and i'm gonna put this link uh to library love fest in the chat so you can you can go check it out um fill out this little google form and we'll send it to you, to you. yeah and a reminder that, you know, this is, we're, we're opening this up for uh, anyone, but mm -hmm. if you're a librarian um, and you work at a library and you want to be whitelisted for e-galleys, you don't have to get permission. You can automatically get them. So if that's something you're interested, go to Library Love Fest. You see on this uh, left hand, it says downloadable e-galleys. Just click there and it'll tell you all of how to register for that. And then you won't have to ask this for them. So that's super mm -hmm. fun. Um, but yeah spread the word and yeah there's a lot of love for all the lj dave dialogue fun that we're gonna have <laughs> all right well i think that's it for us i hope everyone has a fun spooky season and this fall weather is our thoughts are with everybody in florida or surrounding areas who are affected by the storm please our hearts are with you let us know if there's anything we can do um and other than that, we'll see you on the 25th to talk with Laura Zygmunt. And we have some other events coming. So check our Facebook page for more events. Okay. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.